The Exploratorium has this tradition, which you may have experienced if you visited us. We close each day. At 5 o'clock, we ring a school bell. Um, but now we have this huge space. So a single bell, even two bells, because we actually have two bells, isn't going to be enough. We have a space that's three times the size of our original home. Opening day. We'll have a dedication ceremony like many places do when they open to the public. And for us, it's really kind of a welcome home and a welcome to our new home. For that ceremony, we've commissioned something really special, which will then become part of the fabric of every day at the museum. I am really excited about being involved in the bell casting. It's exciting for us as an organization to be able to partner with the Exploratorium in a way that's really meaningful for them. I feel like this is a really historically meaningful and culturally meaningful event that is happening and for us to be able to contribute to that is really uh, exciting. Nick DeFilippo, who is our founding manager, he is a really interesting artist. I think he makes really amazingly beautiful things and uh, I really think that he was the perfect person to get involved in working with Melissa on the design and ultimately to cast the piece. Exploratorium approached me about the bell. Um, they seemed interested in the work they'd seen of mine so they wanted me to do what I wanted to do, which was good. We had to discuss the size a little bit. The larger the bell, the more impressive. So we settled on a bell of about 16 inches diameter, and that seems to be a nice size for a nice shape. So I designed it out, just drew it out, used a bell making jig, and it's a wax process I'm using. In this case, I found that making a mold on a shape doesn't work very well, that what I need to do is make a core form and then turn the actual core while I'm painting wax on it against a cutout, basically, of the bell profile and that gets you the wax and then from there you work wax the way you would work wax which is you can add to it, you can subtract from it. Once you're happy with the design then it's a matter of putting the uh, what are called sprues which are the wax channels that actually allow the metal to flow into the shape. When that was completed then I had to make a mold that would withstand the metal. That's done by layers, just putting on a liquid slurry, throwing on sand, letting it dry, putting on a liquid slurry, throwing on sand, letting it dry. There are 14 coats this way in some parts of it. The bell doesn't need the same amount everywhere, so it was done selectively. Um, it worked, so I'm going to assume I got it enough on.
The next part of the process was to remove the wax because now you have the wax with this encasing and investment is what it's called and uh, you want a cavity where the wax was so we put it in a kiln and basically melt out the wax. The oven is designed to operate up to 2,000 degrees. The process requires approximately 1,650 degrees. What we do with this is to bring, very quickly bring the shell into the kiln, close the kiln, and let it do its thing. And the wax flows out, and over the course of about 45 minutes, the shell is vacated of wax, is prepared for the pour, and now you have an empty mold where the wax was, that can be poured with metal. So this is a nervous point. How the wax comes out, you don't want the uh, ceramic shell to crack. The wax will actually expand a little bit as it's uh, coming out, and if it does that too much, the mold will crack. It's a very thin shell. Each one is a little nerve-wracking because they're usually a little different. Bells have their own peculiarities, and the process I use for making bells is one of my own device so it's like not necessarily the way others would do them so but in terms of the it creates problems this is the the, the sort of crux of the of the process issues coming up are is the ceramic shell strong enough to hold the metal if I've done my job right it will be so that when we pour the metal in it'll fill up and we're good until that point I'm nervous The heart of the process is really the casting, turning the liquid into the solid. And that's sort of the spiritual center of the process. In a bell casting, you got to get it right. Um, with If you're doing sculpture or something, you mess up, you can make a piece, you can weld it on with the bell. It's either right or it's not. So there's a lot invested in that part of the process getting ready, getting everybody together, making a show of it, so to speak. I, there's ultimately, in a lot of, I think, our artistic endeavor, the process becomes really what you're doing. I mean, it's when you're in that space, it's fun. And parts of this is like tedious. Maybe you're working wax for a while and it takes a while. It's kind of fun, turn the radio on. Um, Metal casting is the most intense thing I think I've ever really done as a regular kind of, at least work-oriented sort of behavior. When you're doing it, it's like you're in a different place. There's no distractions. This, as I say, if we can darken the space, we cheat that a little bit and uh, have this crucible of glowing metal pouring out, that's, that's cool, you know? That's what it's about.
After we made a casting and we've got something but we don't know exactly what we've got and so there's a fair amount of work to get past that and to again remove all the investment material to remove the sprues which were the channels that the metal came in on at that point now you have the raw bell and I think this is a traditional thing too you want to ring that as soon as you can and see what you got I think as far as making objects that uh, uh, communicate with people, I think a bell is a very cool way to go. I've kind of got into this by accident, again, like even Foundry, and it's like I kind of, I like doing it, you know? It's, 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 it's a nice way to kind of share what you do with people. It's, you're definitely giving it away, you know? It's just, it's gonna go somewhere else.